If you're a longtime viewer of my channel, you probably know I'm not big on doing follow-up videos. But occasionally, if there is an interesting development in the story of someone or something that I've already covered, I feel inclined to make a video about it. Such is the case with Liver King. In the nine or so months since I made my first video, his content has become increasingly bizarre, and online commentators have noticed what appears to be a change in his health. With that in mind, I've decided to return to the strange world of the Liver King. But before we get into that, if you enjoy this video, please consider leaving a like or a comment, as this will help my channel out in the eternal struggle against the algorithm. But without further ado, here we go. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Liver King, I did make a 40 minute video covering most of the essential information that I will link in the description. Nevertheless, I will give a brief recap. Brian Johnson, aka Liver King, is a supplement salesman and social media influencer who took the internet by storm from late 2021 to late 2022. He did this through a highly crafted social media campaign in a pro wrestling style persona. His videos frequently featured him consuming large quantities of animal products, specifically raw beef liver, or engaging in other over the top stunts like shooting a bed with a tank. During these videos, Johnson preached his message or philosophy for a better life, known as the Nine Ancestral Tenets. Over time though, people logically began to question if this massively muscled, incredibly red man was on PEDs. For a time, this became the most talked about subject in the fitness community. Initially, Liver King addressed the topic indirectly by doing humorous skits. Primal! Primal! <laughs> However, he would later claim that he was, in fact, natural. You've uh, never taken steroids. Never taken steroids. I've never done PEDs other than prioritize, execute, and dominate in life. These claims would eventually come back to bite him when, in late November, Derek of the More Plates, More Dates YouTube channel made a video exposing Johnson. In the video, Derek revealed several emails that had been leaked to him by a PED coach, later revealed to be the YouTuber Vigorous Steve where Johnson admitted to taking tens of thousands of dollars worth of pharmacy-grade performance enhancers every month. To be honest, I know bodybuilders who compete at the Open Mr. Olympia who use less pharma-grade pharma GH than that. Like, that's, that's how high of a dose that actually is. In the wake of the expose, Johnson actually owned up to the truth and went on to several podcasts where he spoke about his PED use fairly candidly and also expressed a desire to go natural. That more or less catches us up to where we left off. Since last year, several important developments have happened in the story of the Liver King. The most notable turn of events came earlier this year when Johnson allegedly stood by his word and quit all of his PEDs cold jerky. No PCT, no HRT, just quitting the roids and replacing them with a pound of raw bull testicles per day. I'm transitioning on one raw testicle a day. I say allegedly here because unless I've missed something, Johnson didn't provide any verifiable evidence of his lifestyle change. According to Johnson, he began his journey on January 2nd of 2023. January 2nd was my last dose, and I don't know what the future has in store, other than I've made an earnest commitment to give it my best fucking effort. And over the following months, he would periodically post updates of his natty journey, dubbed Liver King 2.0. Liver King 2.0! 70 days! These mostly consisted of physique updates and or comparisons to what he looked like prior to starting this experiment. In addition to posts on his various social media accounts, Liver King would also document his journey through a series of confessional posts on his own website, which, as a side note, has become increasingly confusing and difficult to navigate, but that is neither here nor there. Unfortunately, these confessionals only started in July, which some of the Isaac Newtons among you will have noted is over six months after he went natty. LK did provide some general stats about his health, like heart rate and blood sugar levels, as well as his performance on various lifts and so-called Liver King benchmark workouts. The problems here are manifold, though. First, it's hard to say much about his progress or decline based on the stats he provided particularly as it pertains to his workouts. Partially because the workouts differ from update to update, but also because we have an incomplete picture of the data. A lot can affect your performance on any given workout or even specific lifts from day to day, let alone from week to week. This is especially true considering Johnson mentions being sick and dealing with injuries, so without long-term logs to compare to, it's difficult to draw any real conclusions from these numbers. Add to this the fact that you basically just have to take his word for it when it comes to the stats he's provided. 
As far as I can tell, there has been no documentation or blood test shown to confirm these claims. You either trust the stats provided by Liver King or you don't. That's going to be a big hurdle for a lot of people given his past history of withholding information. The issue isn't really helped by the fact that at times it seems like he's trolling with some of these stats. I mean, how are we supposed to take this seriously when you say your chest measurement is big and your body fat is shredded? I know Liver King is a bit of a troll, but if this was supposed to be an earnest attempt to document his natty journey for transparency's sake, he was doing himself no favors. Even though I'm trying to give him the benefit of doubt here, it does make me question the sincerity of these confessionals, and the attempt at a natty journey as a whole. This brings me to my next point. In his August 5th confessional, Johnson admitted that he was considering ending the Liver King 2.0 experiment and getting on a regimen of hormone replacement therapy, specifically testosterone cream as well as human growth hormone. Why? Well, as he explained, his hormones were all over the place from eating raw bull testicles as a replacement for steroids. To quote Johnson, until you try eating one full fucking pound of fresh raw bull testicles a day for over 200 consecutive days and taking them everywhere you go, I don't want to hear it. End quote. Also, as previously noted, injuries were apparently a problem. He would go on to explain that he's liver king, not liver caveman, before going on one of his rants about the evolutionary hunter using technology to shape and create the life he wants. Finally, he ended this confessional by saying, quote, I've made my daddy point, proud AF doing it, and I'm gonna live my life by my terms. Having said that, the second I apply a cream or take a shot of HGH, it will be posted here with full transparency. Who knows, it may be as early as next week. End quote. As it turns out, it would only take Liver King another five days to make his decision. In his August 20th confessional post, Liver King announced that he had decided to end the Liver King 2.0 experiment after 220 days natty once again citing the difficulty of eating a pound of testicles a day as well as the recurring injury issues. Further, he stated, I've proven to myself what I needed to prove, and I see the utility of this technology, and I'm using it again to optimize. End quote. The timing of this post would end up being quite intriguing. In the days leading up to August 20th, one of Liver King's videos had been making the rounds on social media. In the video, LK creates primal cereal by filling a bowl with milk and raw testicles, plus a dash of his protein shake mix, you know, just for a little extra flavor. I got my testicles in farm fresh milk from Liver King Ranch. The most feared warriors, the Maasai. What they get down on is milk, meat, and blood. And they're expressing a higher, more dominant form. Aside from how gross the video is, which is kind of saying something for a Liver King video. Many viewers were struck by the surprising turn in Liver King's appearance. I mean, the guy has always been the same color as those pickled sausages you can only buy in a jug that's in that weird part of the store with the giant containers of condiments, but in this video he looked particularly like a 90s wrestler on the back end of their career, if you know what I mean. The comparison to Larry the Lobster has been made a few times, but he actually looked like he had been slightly boiled in this video. But more importantly, the dude just looked haggard, like he had aged 20 years in a couple months. It really looked like the guy's health had taken a turn for the worse. After this video circulated for a while, the internet's favorite middle-of-the-road commentator, Penguin Zero, aka Critical, aka Charlie, made a video about the situation. In his video, Critical made several critiques of Liver King, largely related to LK deceiving his fans by leading them to believe that they could look like him if they followed his ancestral lifestyle. And he would keep telling them, like, if you work hard, you buy my shit, you eat like me, you live like me, following the ancestral tenets, you can be like me, look like me. When in reality, Johnson's physique came from abusing steroids. And it was all completely a lie. It turns out he was juiced to the gills, he was on tons and tons of performance-enhancing products. More broadly, Critical criticized the nebulous nature of Liver King's ancestral living philosophy, because ultimately you can interpret Johnson's logic of the evolutionary hunter using technology to seek out their best life as justifying any modern convenience. There is no way he'd be able to hunt for all of that. The only reason he's able to eat like he does in these videos is because he is indulging in the modern excess. He is doing nothing even remotely associated with living primal. Being on a private jet is the furthest possible thing from primal living. And some of his audience even called him out saying, you know, our private jet's primal. So he just comes up with some arbitrary excuse on why it's totally fine. So he says, 
A true primal left the comfort of the cave for adventure and a better life. Flying private falls squarely in the better life department. What a cop-out. And in that light, what does primal really even mean anymore? Is eating processed frozen chicken tendies you cooked in the microwave primal because you can put that time and effort you would have spent cooking into something else, like bonding or sleeping or working harder? Most importantly, Critical argued that he believed Liver King was back on gear, citing the changes to his appearance as well as mood and energy levels present in recent videos. But anyway, I do think he's upped his usage of the PEDs. It seems like he is in a much different state now than he was eight months ago, and not for the better. A few days later, the fitness community's most genetically elite YouTuber, Greg Desette, threw his two cents into the conversation, as he often does. While Coach Greg mostly reiterated points made by Critical, he offered some interesting insights into the consequences and negative health effects present when somebody both gets off and also gets back on gear. Aside from potentially making you look older, when you abuse steroids, it can also make your organs age more quickly. And so on the inside, the liver king, due to all the things he's been doing, he's getting older. The older he gets, the more muscle he's going to lose. And so if he wants to look the same or get better, he can't just take away the steroids. He's going to have to up the doses. And so For a time, things were quiet. But then on September 1st, Liver King addressed the videos made by Charlie and Coach Greg. In my opinion, this is actually one of Johnson's most level-headed and reasonable videos. He stated, forthrightly, that he is back on PEDs because he didn't like losing weight and strength during the 220 days that he was off them. I don't like the idea of losing over 20 pounds of muscle. I don't like the idea that became the reality of losing a lot of strength so I've decided to go back on it. He also rebutted Critical's claim that Liver King was deceiving his followers into thinking that if they used his products and followed his lifestyle, they would look like him. I've never said, taking my supplements, you're going to look like me. What I have said is, make sure to get the early morning sun, get your bare feet connected, grounded, anchored into the earth, so that you can express your highest and most dominant form. You, to express your potential, not to look like Liver King. If I try to be unbiased here, I can sort of see what Johnson is saying. As far as I recall, I don't remember hearing him ever say that taking his products would make you look like him. And if I'm being honest, you would have to be pretty dumb to believe they would. On the other hand, there is obviously an implication here. When you make yourself, an incredibly jacked dude, the face of your line of supplements and fitness philosophy, and you attribute your physique to these nine ancestral tenets, what conclusion are people supposed to draw from that? Because of the implication. I think a better critique of Johnson would be that he was pushing his products as effectively a panacea, as well as presenting his message of the nine ancestral tenets as a solution to the overarching societal problems plaguing the modern world. Not convincing people that they would be jacked if they ate powdered bull nuts. But I digest. Liver King would also go on to address the complaints related to the fact that he flies in private planes and uses technology. But it's basically the same statement he's given a few times when the matter has been brought up. I think more interesting is how he reiterated some points he had made in the past about how ancestral living helped him improve his life and saved his kids. As a result, he felt like he had to share this message with as many people as he could. And so I'm thinking, okay, I got a responsibility. I have an obligation. You know, this, this is my opportunity to make my mark, you know, so that other young men like me don't have to hate their lives and suffer and struggle so that other kids out there like my own boys have a decent shot at life which is why he created the Liver King persona and the message of the Nine Ancestral Tenets. Specifically, I think his self-reflection on the fact that he may have actually harmed his message to be quite introspective, really. Does the messenger kill the message sometimes? Yeah. I know that I do. Do I ratchet it up? I do. I, I fucking do. How do I do that? And why do I do it? Because if we don't get eyeballs on the message, then what does it matter? Now, you can believe what he's saying or not. It's entirely up to you. But what I find interesting is that Johnson's explanation here feels almost verbatim like something Coach Greg said in a recent video responding to some of the criticism he's received for talking about Sam Sulik. We want to get the views, the eyeballs on our channel, because the more people that watch the channel, the more money we make, sure, but the more people are going to receive our message. That said, it's not all rosy. Though I do believe Liver King's comments about not wanting to lose weight or strength, as I said earlier, we only have his word to go on. There is no evidence, no blood work, and so forth. 
He says he's lost 20 pounds. Maybe he did. He says he looked leaner after the 220 days natty. And maybe that's the case. I personally think he looked like he lost a little mass, but if any of you remember Furious Pete's video from ages ago about before and after pictures, you can affect a dramatic change in your physique in a matter of hours. That's pretty crazy what you can do with your body and with a little bit of Photoshop. Much less a side-by-side -side of two images potentially cherry-picked from various points across several months. There are other issues here as well. Johnson says that he's on a testosterone cream, three clicks a day, and HGH. I'm taking testosterone. It's a cream. I do three clicks of it a day. I'm also doing a growth hormone. It's two clicks a day. Really what's considered HRT or TRT. The problem is, it's honestly anyone's guess what the actual dosage is. It could be anything. He claims it's not super physiological and just keeping him within the normal range. It's hormone replacement therapy, managed in the normal range, not a super physiological range. But what does that really mean? Normal for a 45-year-old guy or normal for a 19-year-old with high T levels? What if he decides he's not content with even those levels? What if he wants to go beyond normal and start taking those super physiological doses to maintain his strength as he continues to get older? Will he inform the world about that too? Unless Liver King chooses to actually be transparent with this, there is no way to trust him. Maybe he did actually go natty and try to replace steroids with a pound of raw bull testicles every day. But if he had really wanted to earn back a portion of the trust and goodwill that he had lost, he would have done the Liver King 2.0 experiment with full transparency and blood work. This was even a point made by Greg Doucette in his response to Liver King's response. Yeah, he makes a lot of videos. And so if he was actually natural for 220 days, which he states right here, why does he not have any blood work to support these claims? Are we just supposed to believe him? The crazy thing is, with this decision, Johnson has had another golden opportunity basically fall directly into his lap. Regardless of any past mistakes he's made, he has yet another chance at gaining back some trust from the fitness community. Maybe he can't win them all back. Probably not even most, if we're being honest. But he can get some of them back with total transparency. Just get regular blood work and or random PED tests done to prove he isn't going outside of the boundaries he has set for himself on the record. He said more than once that he's a man who holds himself accountable for his mistakes and then takes massive action to correct them. This is a chance to do that, to show the world that he isn't a liar or deceiver. In my opinion, it's also a chance to rehabilitate the image of ancestral living, which he acknowledges he's done damage to. Ultimately though, it's up to him what he wants to do next. As the great Marco Piero White once said as he dumped 39 stock cubes into a pot of spaghetti, it's your choice. This does segue fairly nicely into my next point, almost like I wrote it that way. The evolution of Liver King's content in the last nine months. In broad strokes, Liver King's content has remained generally the same. There are massive meals, mostly made of meat. There are workout videos. There is the occasional gun content, or Liver King doing crazy stunts on his property. Nevertheless, there have been some gradual shifts over time. The first thing I noticed was that he doesn't really bring up the nine ancestral tenets as much as he used to. Occasionally he drops one, but they've largely been relegated to his website now. Similarly, his supplements are less prominently placed these days. Maybe that has something to do with the class action lawsuit he was involved in. In December of last year, Johnson was hit with a $25 million lawsuit on behalf of Christopher Altamare and other vulnerable and health-conscious consumers. The suit alleged that Johnson had misled his customers with cult-like practices and engaged in misrepresentation of his products due to the fact that he was on steroids. However, in March of this year, Altamare voluntarily dismissed the lawsuit through his representation, Cotter Law Group. Some signs point to Johnson settling out of court, but it's hard to know for certain. Either way, Liver King's supplements, shakes, and bars tend to be relegated to the back half of his videos, where he, or Liver King Chef Lionel, tongue-in-cheekly present them to you as the alternative to eating raw organs, if you're not man enough. If you're not man enough to do it, get yourself a bottle of King! I think this is reminiscent of something I noted in my first Liver King video that I haven't seen anyone else point out. When Johnson would go onto a podcast, he would often bring with him a smorgasbord of raw organs and bone marrow, which he would feed to the reluctant podcast hosts. Usually they would react rather poorly, so Liver King would bring out his alternatives, like his capsules or protein shakes. Because here's the thing, most people aren't gonna fucking eat this way. Frankly, if there was a marketing tactic that Liver King used well, I think it will be juxtaposition rather than outright deception. 
this is the way to eat healthy, but it's super gross and only a primal savage like myself can eat it. But I do have these products that have the same benefits and they're easier to eat. If you're not mad to do that, do a favor and get yourself a bottle of King. Let's have everything on this page to boost your testosterone. The intriguing thing about this to me is that although the supplements have slowly begun to take a backseat to the rest of his content, the shock factor only seems to be increasing over time, which was a point raised by Critical in his video. So he needs to keep amping up the extreme meals that he's eating, so he's eating chicken heads and peeling the tongue out of frogs in one of his other TikToks, most recent ones. Like Large amounts of animal parts were a fixture of the Liver King content before being exposed. But as Charlie said, it seems like he has been upping the ante in the past eight months. There are massive displays of animal parts, tables loaded with brains, piles of hearts, mountains of heads that would make corn happy, and literal wheelbarrows full of testicles, all laid out in the most gratuitous way possible. Whether it be eating frog tongues, whole chicken heads, skull and all, or eating raw testicles straight from the scrote, he appears to be doubling down on the gross-out nature of these videos. In fact, after the initial Primal Cereal video went viral, he made Primal Cereal 2 Electric Eyeballaroo, where he ate goat and bull eyes and milk. Oh, there's some good cereal. <laughs> These videos also seem to be getting more exploitative. I don't know what I can include due to YouTube's vague guidelines in the subject, but some examples would be Liver King punching an eel to kill it, then cutting off its head, which still seemed to be alive. In another video, he ripped the organs out of a frog that was still twitching on the ground, unclear if it was alive or not. Then there was the really bizarre video in which a liver king shot, shot being in quotations here, a fish with a bow and arrow. After a cut, we see him delivering the killing blow with a knife. Then of course he removed the organs, including, and I'm sure you saw this coming, the liver and testicles. We got the liver! <laughs> this video in particular, as well as the eel video to a certain degree, blur the line with another type of content, which is painfully staged. In the eel video, Liver King pretends to jump in the water and spear the eel with a trident. In yet another video, he pretends to catch a fish out of the lake with his bare hands, only it's obviously quite dead, despite Liver King shaking it around like a can of spray paint. He then rips its head off with his teeth, as you do. One of the most unhinged examples of this sort of video came recently when Liver King claimed he went hunting for an alpha organism with a liver, but his reel broke and he had to wrestle it with his bare fucking hands. Facts! <laughs> this is where we get into the area in which Liver King's content has changed the most. I'm calling it skits and bits. There are a lot of examples of this, but some that come to mind were the series of videos where Liver King was randomly wearing bright ass kings of comedy style suits while feeding his dogs or when he had to punch through the windshield of his truck with a set of brass knuckles to save his Liver King bars. Holy shit, they're trapped in there. You gotta get them out. Let's get them out one at a time. Or that time he imitated Stone Cold Steve Austin for some reason. He also did a bizarre series of videos about duck eggs where he referenced famous duck egg enjoyer Michael Trent. You get a duck egg. You get a duck egg. <laughs> What the purpose of these videos was is beyond me. Maybe he was trying to get a collab going, but so far that seems like it has yet to materialize. I'm really excited for that though, so please, Liver King, Mike, don't hurt me on this one. Lately, Johnson has been adding different characters to the Liver King cinematic universe as well. Usually they boil down to LK just wearing different hats and pretending to be a Spartan or a Pharaoh or something. The most notable character to me is the recently introduced Liver Nerd, who is the world's strongest vegan. I am the world's strongest vegan. You heard it here. Any other vegans out there that want to challenge me, I'm liver nerd, face to face. I find this character interesting because up to this point, I can't really recall Liver King taking shots at vegans or vegetarians. I believe he's even said that he has respect for people who choose to live that altruistic lifestyle. I can't remember where though. It does just seem like a bit of harmless joking around, but as we've seen quite a bit now, these things tend to ramp up over time with Liver King. There is one final development that I would like to touch on because I think it's the most interesting as far as the direction he might be trying to take his content or character in the future. Liver King is apparently dubbing this savage luxury. Primals want to know how to live a life of savage luxury. And from what I can tell, it's his take on the Andrew Tate style hustle and grind manosphere content. These videos typically involve Liver King wearing a buffalo fur coat or some fancy suits and sitting in a garish throne. 
Often he is smoking a cigar and swigging down pricey scotch while playing with his guns and other expensive toys. Usually, prominently placed in these videos is Liver King's gold watch and ring. And in one of his most unhinged videos to date, he is sitting in a throne in the back of a truck while referring to himself as the Top King and calling out Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor. You ain't never seen solid gold fucking crown glasses like this, motherfucker. Yeah, that's the fucking Top King right there. Frequently, these posts are accompanied by a diatribe about masculinity and the value of a man being based on how he can provide for his family, etc. You can't be a good dad, a good husband, a good family man if you're dead. I'm a bit unsure of where he's going with this content because with the way Liver King says savage luxury, almost like it's a trademark. This is how you live a life of savage luxury. I wonder if he's planning on creating some kind of fashion line or lifestyle brand. There is merch coming soon to the Liver King website, so who knows. Nonetheless, this was a very logical direction for Liver King to take his content in. Frankly, it was what I expected him to do last year when we were kind of at the peak of all this Manosphere nonsense. But now, with some people finally beginning to acknowledge how terrible the Tate brothers truly were, there seems to be an opportunity for some people to carve out a nice little niche in that ecosystem. On the other hand, it may be the case that Johnson is simply taking some aspects of that content and grafting it onto his own existing brand. For now, at least. We don't know what things will look like in the future. That's the thing I find interesting about the ongoing story of Liver King. What is he going to do next? Where is he going to take this? Part of me has been watching the slow progression of his content and wondering if he's aiming for a reality show, in the same vein as something like Duck Dynasty. Or will he be satisfied with continuing in this direction as a content creator slash influencer, while quietly trying to rebuild his brand and reputation? Personally, I find Liver King to be a really compelling case study in the dynamics of the online fitness community. He lost the trust of most people, which was entirely his own fault. He lied about being natural, and in the fitness community that is almost an unforgivable sin. With that in mind, I find it hard to believe that this was some kind of well-orchestrated scheme to defraud his followers. The fact that Liver King's team reached out to Derek before he launched his social media campaign, openly asking for steroid advice and even saying he would be willing to do a video with Derek. Brian has some questions and ideas about why he may not be responding to the HGH, and I think you could pull some good shit out of your conversation with him for content. It really throws a monkey wrench into that idea. Unless you view this as some ninth dimensional chess move as insurance in the event that he ever did get exposed or something. But yeah, I don't buy that. He made a tremendous miscalculation ever running with the lie that he was natural though. He should have just been open about his use from day one. Say, hey, I'm in a shitload of expensive gear because I want to look a certain way and I want to be stronger than you can be naturally. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, and I don't think my desires clash with my core philosophy of the nine ancestral tenets, especially if you just want to live a healthy life and not push yourself beyond normal limits the way I do. Had he just done this from day one, he most likely would have avoided all of his future problems. The fitness community loves wild, over-the-top, and freaky characters. What do you do, Dale? What's your favorite fantasy? That's why, to use a pro wrestling term, Liver King got over in the first place. He just got over as a heel because everybody justifiably believed he was lying about being natural. Had he been open and honest from the beginning, I think he very well could have occupied a niche similar to that and equally as red as Rich Piana. Would you prefer to see a dick hanging lower than the balls or fucking balls hanging lower than the dick? but with more raw meat and guns and pro wrestling shtick. Whether you believe what he says about ancestral living or not, the guy is obviously quite passionate about strength and conditioning. It oozes from him, metaphorically and quite possibly literally. And if you believe the leaked emails, the guy does practice a lot of what he preaches in terms of diet. I respond well to raw eggs, raw liver, raw meat and dairy. I don't eat any vegetable oils. So you can at least give him kudos that he's like reasonably following the shit that he preaches. Again, had he just been transparent, I think he would have been well liked by a significant portion of the fitness community that has a thing for alarmingly muscular men with weird personalities. Honestly, considering the current climate of the fitness community in regards to PED transparency, I think it would have won a lot of people over. To me, that is one of the most fascinating aspects of the Liver King situation in retrospect. He was just too late in coming clean about not being clean. In recent years, the climate has shifted in the fitness community. We're seeing a lot more openness and transparency in regards to PED use. 
It used to just be an open secret that was only spoken about by retired bodybuilders, or guys who don't give a fuck like Lee Priest and Tom Plantz. But recently, we've been seeing more and more pros like Chris Bumstead admitting to using gear. It's good that we're seeing more and more people in the fitness industry and strength sports come out and say, yes, I'm on PEDs. This isn't possible to do natural. Even those who aren't willing to say exactly what they're taking but acknowledge they're enhanced are doing the right thing to a degree. The flip side is that nowadays it seems like one of the easiest ways to gain clout in this space is to admit to being enhanced, or to at least not deny it. Sure, there are still dudes like Mike O'Hearn claiming to be natty despite being nearly 55 years old and bigger than a lot of pro bodybuilders who admit to being on PEDs, but nowadays saying you're enhanced is basically the babyface move. The problem is, I think we've hit a tipping point where we've gone from simply applauding transparency to normalizing steroid use. It feels like we're reaching critical mass, pun intended, on this issue with influencers like Sam Sulik. Now, this isn't me trying to dogpile on Sam Sulik. If I was, I would have made the video about him instead. It would probably get way more views if I did. Sam Sulik seems like a decent guy with a good head on his shoulders. He's well-spoken and very knowledgeable for such a young dude. But there is an elephant in the room. He's only 21 and he's gone through a massive transformation. What he's doing is simply very unhealthy. There is a reason you see the term speed running life come up so often when discussing him. People who have been watching the bodybuilding world for even a fairly short period of time have seen more than their fair share of promising careers cut short. We don't even have to go back more than a few months to see a massive influencer like Joe Stetics passing away at just the age of 30. Joe was himself open about his PED use. Yet, when we see influencers who've been in this space for years, if not decades, raising alarm bells about guys like Sam Sulik, the response from his fans has been largely ambivalent, if not cheering him on anyway because it's his life and he's gonna do what he wants anyway, or something of that nature. And I realize that Sam isn't out here promoting PED use, but I'll apply the same logic to this as I did with Liver King, claiming that he didn't tell anybody that using his products would make them look like him. It's about the implication. Sam has cultivated a massive social media following in an incredibly short amount of time, probably for the reasons I mentioned above about him being knowledgeable, articulate, and just generally likable. But he's also basically a walking advertisement for PEDs. He's put on a tremendous amount of muscle in just a few short years from an already solid base. What is the message that sends out to millions of young viewers on social media? These things work. The problem is, they are also very dangerous when abused, and ultimately, the deciding factor in how much your body can tolerate is based on the genetic lottery. If Sam is one of the unlucky ones, we're not going to see the negative side effects until it's far too late, and by then, the damage will already be done. Even if the worst does not happen, he'll likely need to be on TRT for the rest of his life, like Larry Wheels, due to the damage he's doing to his endocrine system. Now, <clears throat> going completely off, isn't an option for me. I cannot produce testosterone naturally. So I'm going to be on testosterone replacement therapy. Now again, I'm not saying this to demonize Sam Sulik. He's just one person in a sea of influencers, similar to the Liver King actually. Ironically, I see more than a few parallels between them in the ways they've managed to gain fame in Sam's case and infamy in Liver King's. This is also not an attempt to absolve Brian Johnson of what he's done. Rather, I find myself returning to the conclusion I drew in my first video about the Liver King controversies. That is, he is just a symptom of the larger illness that is the bodybuilding community and the wider fitness community slash industry. He's far from the biggest liar, and he's far from the only person using social media to sell supplements. There was also nothing particularly unique about his message, something he even pointed out in the past. What he does have is good marketing and an entertaining personality. And in an industry that is so often about style over substance, that was more than enough to gain him a massive following, as well as an even more massive amount of scrutiny. For now at least, the Liver King story is unfinished. It remains to be seen where Brian Johnson will take the Liver King persona and brand. Maybe there will be a reality show or a Netflix documentary. Honestly, I'm kind of shocked we haven't gotten a Liver King podcast yet, given how there is a fucking podcast about everything these days. Perhaps he will just continue to make content on his various social media accounts, slowly upping the ante over time. It's hard to say right now, but one way or another, I think he'll be sticking around and providing us with more bizarre moments for years to come. Over the last week or so while I was wrapping this video up, Johnson started posting videos where he was wearing an eye patch. Sometimes these videos were interspersed with other videos where he was not. 
This led to confusion and some speculation about what exactly was going on, and if this was another character he was playing. Johnson somewhat fueled the rumors with posts claiming he had been knocked out and might lose his eye. However, he recently made a post explaining the situation and saying he had injured himself while training with resistance bands. Two fists to head, bands right to the eye, and then head to floor. According to Johnson, he suffered a concussion during the incident and had to be taken to the hospital in an ambulance. This is a serious injury, and from knowing someone who has been dealing with post-concussion syndrome for over a year, the effect it can have on your life is substantial. If you exert yourself too much before you're fully recovered, it can set you back significantly. And considering Brian's persona is based around overexerting himself, I wonder how he'll be able to handle this. Regardless of what he's said or done, I wish him a speedy recovery. But more than that, I hope this acts as a wake-up call of sorts for him. Hopefully Liver King can recognize that he is putting his body through too much, and realize that he should prioritize his health over everything else. As always, I want to thank you for watching the video, as well as liking, commenting, and subscribing. And a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Thank you, Hingle McCringleberry, FarmD, Brady, Jonas Namanson, Rusty Shackelford, Jackson, Fightback CBD, Mike Roballs, Bone CK, Andy, Fisherman666, Missy Muscles, Random Candor, Fuzzy Eunice, Dot Old Neon, Timothy Lee Peterson, Julius Caesar Has Jungle Fever, Ellie, Firebrand, Quasi, Snepsts, I Said No Cops, Alex, and Neem.